the first thing that shocked me and hit me hard was when I saw a baby who was on oxygen, breathing kind of okay, and all of a sudden, while we were talking, a nurse comes and takes away the nasal cannula that the baby was on and walks away, and the baby starts getting agitated. I turned around and asked the doctor, why did she just take the nasal cannula away because this baby is having a hard time. And she said, oh, I'm so, she, he said, there's probably another baby who's even in more distress than this one. So that's why she did it. And I said, but why? He said, because we don't have that many tanks. So I, I said to him, you know, can we get oxygen s from somewhere else? He said, not really. But because he saw me agitated myself, he said, he, he signaled to the nurse, just put the oxygen back on this baby because the other baby was in another room and I didn't see him. So he did and you can see, she did and sh you could see the baby settle down again. And, and you know, again, I, I'm not, I wasn't used to this, you know, I was practicing in, med in the United States and we have oxygen coming out of the walls, um, hooking up ev every person and, you know, it was such a shock to me and I wasn't used to it and it really bothered me. But that was nothing compared to what he showed me next. He showed me, he showed me like five, six babies, just, you know, one after another in beds who had retroviral disease, HIV basically. They were, most of them were, had lost their parents and they were there uh, infected with HIV. And the problem was they did not have retroviral medication. So every baby that uh, he, he, they were dealing with were sentenced to death. I, I had to remove myself from the facility because I was so emotional and finally I said, you know, I'm going to just walk back to my hotel. And I started walking and on the street I see these homeless children uh, sitting around with dogs. The dogs and the children were buddies. Those, those were the only living things they could relate to. And it, it really hurt me so much. So I moved on and I said, okay, well, there's nothing much I can do. And the last episode, which just broke me uh, in half, was when from a distance I'm getting close to my hotel and I see a lady sitting, she was crouching under a tree. Uh, as soon as I got to her, I, I, I saw a pool of blood underneath her. And so I went up to her and I said, what's going on? And she said that she basically she was um, bleeding uh, vaginally and uh, she had just come back from the hospital. They couldn't take care of her because she didn't have the right papers or whatever. And she had a baby on her back, and, you know, two, two year old. And, and she said, I have no money. I have to go walk back to uh, the place where I can take a bus to go back to my home. And she was, you know, going back, back to, the, uh, to the bus station, but the bus station is like a couple of miles away. And she got tired and she was bleeding. So obviously she was sick. And it just, you know, it just, you, you just stand there just saying, is this, is this for real? Is this really happening? So, you know, obviously I gave her money for transportation. Actually, I gave her everything I had on, on me and, and told her to, to go home and rest. And she thanked me and I went home. I went back to my hotel, to my lush, lush hotel. And, you know, you just sit there and wonder, what is this uh, uh, about? Here I am, you know, in a, in a five-star hotel, and outside of th this hotel, there are people who are suffering. I mean, just absolutely suffering. And it was just so unfair. And I didn't leave my, my room for almost a day. And that evening, I sat down and I said, there's something I have to do. There's no way I can just live my life in absolute ignorance anymore about the suffering of others and I need to do something about it. How much I can do, who knows, but I'll do the best I can. And the, the origins for the International Fund for Africa was um, born that night.
you know that people, if they really knew what you're doing and how much you're making a difference, they would help you. And sometimes you want to give up. Sometimes you get tired. But then when you see those babies and what we've been able to do, you know, I said, you know, this is, this is my life. This is what I'm meant to do. And I'm not going to stop no matter what unless, you know, I become homeless myself. Go to our website. Take a look. And if something moves you, help us. At least take a look and see what we're trying to do. And I guarantee you, you'll not walk away without feeling something very powerful.